Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I will teach you all about miniature painting. This is part 14, dry brushing. So let's begin by asking the question, what exactly is dry brushing? Well, dry brushing is a painting technique in which you use the end of your brush in a similar fashion to such items as a feather duster. And essentially you drag your brush across the surface of a miniature, emphasizing the edges or raised areas of the miniature and leave the recesses alone. So essentially you're just using the very tip of your brush for this technique. And the reason why it's called dry brushing is the fact that you're attempting to only use the pigment in the paint and not any of the medium in which the pigment is suspended in, in the paint. So basically it will be as if your brush is dry when you're brushing the miniature. Well, the next question is obviously, why use dry brushing? Why would you use it to paint your miniatures? Well, first of all, it is a relatively quick and easy process to learn and to apply to miniatures. Second, it is amazing for bringing out textured surfaces, such as feathers, fur, hair, anything that is textured or has a lot of raised areas and crevices. And finally, it is amazing for blending colors together. There are some people who can air dry brush so well that it will rival airbrushes in the seamless blending of the paint. So obviously the next question is, why not airbrush? Well, first of all, it is very wasteful depending on what type of paint you are using. You'll notice how much paint ends up on your piece of cloth or towel or whatever surface you're using to wipe off your paint on. Number two, it requires frequent loading of the brush since you're only using a tiny bit of the paint particles on your brush and it, you typically use them very quickly up and then you'll have to reload your brush. And finally, and I cannot emphasize this enough, dry brushing kills brushes. So when you're dry brushing, do not use your finest brush because you'll be surprised how quickly something nice and pristine like this brush can easily become something like, well, let's say this one. Uh, you see the end of the bristles because uh, that's typically the motion in which you air dry brush frequently. Uh, it tends to wear down your brushes and creates this kind of uh, brush in the end. So it will kill your brushes. And of course that begs the question, what brush should you use when dry brushing? As I said, not your finest brush. What I typically prefer when a dry brush is a nice flat headed brush because that way you can control exactly what surfaces you, the ends of your brush touch. If it's a really circular end, you'll have a problem because it'll probably get into the recesses. So I like to use a nice flat headed brush, which you uh, can see here. And uh, yeah, that is just my personal opinion of what to use. Obviously anything can actually be used as a dry brush because it's a technique, not necessarily a specific brush. And then the final question is, when should you dry brush? The answer is after the base coat and shading has occurred. So in a moment, for example, you can see here, this cyborg have been, has been uh, already base coated and uh, shaded. And since dry brushing is essentially a highlighting process, you always gotta make sure you get your base coat down and your shading, which gets in the crevices, and then you use your dry brush to differentiate the textures and raised areas of the miniature. So now that we've covered all the basics of dry brushing, it's now time to cover how to dry brush. So we'll start off by adding a little bit of paint at Ministratum Gray, because we're going to paint a nice gradient of grays on this cyborg warthog. So we'll start with my Ministratum Gray and put a little bit in my palette. This is one of my backup palettes. So let's add a little bit of paint because as I said, you don't need a lot when you're dry brushing, but you will waste a lot when you're dry brushing. Next, take your dry brush, whatever you want to use. As I said, a nice flat headed dry brush like I'm using and just dip it in a little bit into the paint. Make sure that the end is covered. As you can see, I got some paint on the end of it. That is good. And the next step is to wipe the paint off your brush. And what I like to do is do at least two to three 
crisscross patterns on a paper towel. This is a heavy duty paper towel. I recommend something that has a good absorption to it. And what this does is it removes the medium from your brush tip while also evenly distributing the paint throughout the end of the brush. That is, creates a much more even dry brushing. Um, an inexperienced person can easily create uh, an imbalanced dry brush and, and you'll, it'll be easy to tell. So now that it is evenly distributed on my brush and there's very, very little medium, just the pigment on the brush, I'm going to apply this to the miniature. So it's time to dry brush. So as you can see, I'm just dragging the miniature um, drain the brush along the miniature in both directions only focusing on the raised areas while allowing the recesses to be the nice dark shaded gray and I already ran out of paint once so I quickly repeat this process again dip the brush in the paint wipe it off on the paper towel and apply it to the miniature again as you can see there's a lot of repetition to this and uh, it does waste a lot of the median from the paint I'm only focusing on the raised areas and I'm going to leave some of the darkness in the shadows and along the underbelly of the cyborg and only focus on the more available areas and the areas that the light would hit. And after I'm done with that coat, what I'm going to do is a, another dry brush coat. So once again, I added a lighter color gray, dip my brush in, once again, wipe it off on the paper towel. Make sure that it's evenly distributed and remove that median from the brush. And then I'm going to repeat this process. And if you watch painting tutorials, you'll notice that some people say heavier dry brush or lighter dry brush. And the, uh, the actual level of dry brush is typically referring to the amount of pigment on your brush while you're dry brushing, as well as the, uh, how much you actually hit the miniature with your brush. If you're really, really forcing the brush on the miniature, it could be a more heavy dry brush, as well if you're using a lot more pigment on your brush, it is a more heavy dry brush. So what you do is, with each brighter layer, you want to do a lighter and lighter dry brush. Therefore, you want to have less and less pigment, and you want to hit the miniature with less and less force with your brush. And that's what I'm going to keep doing. I'm just going to slowly work my way up the miniature with lighter and lighter colors. So once again, I add a little bit more white to this gray to create an even lighter gray, and mixed it well in my palette. As you can see, it's a very light gray. And dip my brush in once again. And you'll see in just a moment, I'll take it to my paper towel and I will wipe it off in several directions. And as you can see, there's a lot of median already on the, bra on the paper towel. And I'm just getting it nice and even on my brush. As you can see, there's very, very little paint on my brush. As you can see right there, there's only a tiny, tiny amount. You can barely see it on the brush. And I'm gonna apply it to even higher surfaces on the miniature. By higher, I mean height-wise higher. I'm only gonna, I'm gonna create a nice gradient of color. As you go from the feet to the head, it'll go from dark to light. And I'm just picking up on those nice raised edges. And as you can see, after just a couple easy colors, you can totally see the textures and a nice gradient forming on this cyborg, as opposed to before where you really couldn't tell the difference. And I'm just going over the miniature. And as you can see, after each coat, there's just an even greater gradient in the color. But it's very smooth, and it's a great transition from dark to light. And here's what it looks like after several different colors. And this hasn't taken me much time at all. And then just by repeating this process repeatedly over and over again with even lighter colors, but just by adding white into the mixture frequently, uh, I'm just repeating this process and focusing more on the higher levels of the miniature. And yeah, this just shows the effectiveness of dry brushing. And after so many coats, as you can see, this is what the cyborg looks like. And you can clearly see the definition in the fur. And on the other side here, I haven't done it, so you can see what the original looked like. So that's it before the dry brushing, and here's what it looks like after the dry brushing. A huge difference, so much greater gradient, and you can see all that nice texture to the model. And that is what dry brushing is about. Applying very, very little pigment at a time to the miniature in thin coats, um, just by using the brush technique that I've showed you today. And that's dry brushing. So thank you very much for watching this part of Miniature Painting 101 and stay tuned for part 15. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video, comment in the comment section down below and subscribe to my channel if you've already done so. It really does help a lot. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.